हेलो एवरीवन सो टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट ऑटो इम्यूनिटी और द ऑटो इम्यून डिजीजेज सो द टाइप्स ऑफ ऑटो इम्यून डिजीज फैक्टर अफेक्टिंग ऑटो इम्यूनिटी एंड द वेरियस थेरेपीज यूज टू ट्रीट द ऑटो इम्यून डिजीजेज विल बी कवर्ड इन दिस लेक्चर सो विदाउट एनी डिले लेट स्टार्ट द वीडियो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वट इज ऑटो इम्यूनिटी सो हेयर एज द नेम इंडिकेटिंग दैट ऑटो मीन्स सेल्फ and immunity means immune system so here as we know our immune system has the power to identify that which cell is its of own body and which cell is from the foreign body so but sometime this property of immune system get reduced or you can say vanished due to which the immune system start recognizing its own cells as a foreign antigen so once it start recognizing its own cells as an antigen so it will start degrading these self cells so the condition in which immune cells they start degrading their own cells or you can say when they fail to recognize their self cells and attack these self antigen so that condition is known as auto immunity and generally these such attacks they result in the damage of tissue and organs which ultimately lead to the development of autoimmune diseases so here the autoimmune disease these autoimmune diseases they arises from the destruction of either the self proteins the you can say by the destruction of organs by auto antibodies and self reactive T cells. Now let's discuss some autoimmune diseases. So first is Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Here, in this disease, the person it produces the auto antibodies and the T helper cells, which are sensitized sensitized toward the thyroid antigens. Due to this, these auto antibodies they just you can say they just degrade the thyroid cells due to which there will be the less production of thyroid hormone which ultimately lead to a condition and sometime due to this inflammatory response there may be development of goiter which is a visible enlargement of thyroid gland so this hashimoto's thyroiditis is a example of autoimmune disease in which auto antibodies they start degrading person's own thyroid cells next is rheumatoid arthritis it is a disease of joints in which the joints they get stiffed and inflamed and this is due to the production of auto antibodies which are generally called as rheumatoid factors so these auto antibodies the which is generally a igm so it bind to another auto antibody that is igz forming a complex of igm and ig z now this complex it get deposit in the joints and result in the hypersensitivity reaction which ultimately lead to the inflammation of joint so this rheumatoid arthritis is also an example of autoimmune disease the third example is type 1 diabetes mellitus here as we know that diabetes is a condition in which person is not able to metabolize the Uh, glucose means you can say in which the glucose is not enter inside the cells so here this type 1 diabetes mellitus is also one of the example of autoimmune disease in which the insulin producing beta cells they are degraded by the antibodies which result in the decrease production of insulin and ultimately increase the level of glucose in the blood here if we compare between the healthy person and the diabetic person so in case of healthy person as we know that the pancreas the beta cells of pancreas they produce the insulin and this insulin it ultimately bind to the glucose here this blue dot they represent the glucose and this green shape they represent the uh, insulin so this insulin it bind to the glucose and ultimately transfer this glucose to the cells 
बट इन केस ऑफ डायबिटिक पर्सन द बीटा सेल्स ऑफ पेनक्रिया दे यू कैन से दीज आर डीग्रेडेड बाय द सेल्फ रिएक्टिव सेल्स सो दीज सेल्फ रिएक्टिव इम्यून सेल्स दे डिस्ट्रॉय द बीटा सेल्स इन द pancreas in diabetic person now as a result there will be the decreased production or you can say absence of the insulin and in the absence of insulin glucose is now it cannot move inside the cell so it will remain in the blood ultimately increase the level of blood glucose so this type 1 diabetes mellitus is also an example of autoimmune disease because it is caused by the self reactive immune cells now the next example is misthenia gravis which is the stiffness of uh, muscles here as we know the muscles they contract when they get the signal from the nerve cells so in case of normal person this shape represent the nerve cells so here it release the certain chemical which is acetylcholine and this acetylcholine it will bind to the receptor that is acetylcholine receptor present on the muscle cells muscle will only activated when this acetylcholine will bind to the receptor so here as you can see this red dot represent the acetylcholine so as acetylcholine bind to the acetylcholine receptor the muscle will get activated this is the procedure of muscle activation in an healthy person but in case of person which is suffered from this misthenia gravis which is an autoimmune disease so here this nerve cell it will produce the acetylcholine as usual but here in muscle cells the receptor that is acetylcholine receptor it is degraded by self reactive immune cells here like you can see here this auto antibody it bind to this acetylcholine receptor and ultimately degrade it so here the auto antibody means the antibody is not able to differentiate between self and non self receptor or antigen so it is degrading its own receptor so that's why this misthenia gravis is also an example of autoimmune disease so as you can see now the receptor is not there so in the absence of receptor this acetylcholine will not be able to bind to this receptor and as a result there will be no activation of muscle and the development of this misthenia gravis will takes place the next example of autoimmune disease is sle that is systemic lupus erythematosus here it is a disease of you can say when these auto antibodies they bind to the vast antigens like they may bind to dna histones rbcs platelets leukocytes clotting factor so means when there are these a uh, plenty of auto antibodies which is binding to the majority of tissue antigens so there will be the development of certain symptoms and which ultimately called as sl e the symptom they generally include fever weakness arthritis skin rashes and kidney dysfunction the next example of autoimmune disease is multiple sclerosis here it is a disease of myelin sheath in this case the auto reactive t cells means the t cells which are reactive against the self cells so these auto reactive t cells they bind and ultimately degrade the myelin sheath which is present along the nerve fiber so as we know this myelin sheath it protect the nerve fiber it insulate the nerve fiber so the breakage in this myelin sheath it leads to the development of certain neurological dysfunction which may may be the numbness to limbs paralysis or loss of vision so this multiple sclerosis is also an or it's also an you can say autoimmune disease because it is occurring due to the activation of auto reactive t cells which ultimately degrading the myelin sheath of nerve cells or nerve fiber so this was about the autoimmune diseases now what are the factors that can you can say that can cause the autoimmune disease so autoimmune disease can be due to the various factor like first genetic factor as we know that uh, there are certain genetic factor which are responsible for the occurrence of these autoimmune diseases like the inheritance pattern of this hla human leukocyte antigen which is controlled by the mhc gene is responsible for 
द ऑटोम्यून डिजीज सेकेंड इट ऑटोम्यून डिजीज दे मे बी अफेक्टेड बाय द एज एंड सेक्स जनरली इट हैज बीन सीन दैट द ओल्ड एज पीपल दे आर मोर लाइकली और दे आर मोर प्रोन और यू कैन से देर आर मोर चांसेज ऑफ डेवलपमेंट ऑफ दीज ऑटो इम्यून डिजीज इज बिकॉज देयर इम्यून सिस्टम इज नॉट इन वेल रेगुलेटेड स्टेट सो इट मे कोज द मिस्टेक्स द नेक्स्ट फैक्टर दैट इज इन्फेक्शन ड्यूरिंग इन्फेक्शन आवर इम्यून सिस्टम गेट कंफ्यूज एंड इट मे गेट यू कैन से इट मे गेट मिस रेगुलेटेड एंड अल्टीमेटली स्टार्ट डिग्रेडिंग इट्स ओन सेल सो इन्फेक्शन मे बी रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर द ऑटो इम्यून diseases and the next factor environmental issues or you can say environmental factor so some syndromes they are more common in certain geographical location so this suggests that there is there is some link between the environment and the development of these autoimmune disorder so these are the factor which ultimately affect or responsible for the autoimmune diseases now the treatment for autoimmune diseases so generally autoimmune diseases can be treated by three ways first is the t cell activation here sorry t cell vaccination so here we add the specific you can say the specific antigens they are injected into individual to immunize them against these self reactive t cells so this is a t cell vaccination next peptide blockage of mhc molecules because as we know the t cells they recognize the mhc and antigen complex so here in this strategy we can block the mhc molecule by using a synthetic peptide which uh, differ only in one or few amino acids so as a result now mhc is blocked so there will be no formation of you can say mhc complex with this antigen here so the auto reactive t cell will not be able to recognize that particular antigen and there will be no occurrence of autoimmune disease and the next strategy we can use the monoclonal antibody as you know the monoclonal antibodies are those antibodies which are specific against single specific antigen so here we can use the monoclonal antibodies which are specific against the self reactive t helper cells we can also use monoclonal antibody which are uh, you can say effective against or specific against the il2 receptors and antigen activated t helper cells so they ultimately block the antigen activated t helper cells so there will be uh, no issue of autoimmune disorder so this is all about the autoimmune diseases the factor affecting them and how we can treat or the various therapies which can be used for the treatment of autoimmune diseases so this is all about autoimmunity and autoimmune disease so that's all for today guys see you in the next video thank you very much